Hello everyone. Let us solve problem D of chord forces round 689. In this problem, we are given an array. So for this problem, we'll take this example to understand the problem as well as the approach. We have this array 4, 4, 5, then 6, then 5, 5, and 3. So we have to take the minimum element and the maximum element. So here the minimum element is 3 and the maximum element is 6. And we will find out their average which is 6 plus 3 by 2. We will do the integer division. So it will be 4. Then we will separate this array into two parts. All the elements which are less than equal to this average will go on the left hand side and rest will go on the right hand side. So 4 is less than equal to 4. So we will come on left hand side. Next 4 will come on the left hand side. 5 will go on the right hand side. 6 on the right hand side then 5 right right then 3 will come on the left hand side now similarly we'll do this again we'll find out the you can take any one of this side either you can go left or right say we are going to the right so if you go to the right here the maximum and the minimum are this 5 is the minimum, 6 is the maximum, we will take their average which will be 5, then we will split this into two parts. All the elements which are less than or equal to 5 will go on the left hand side, rest will go on the right hand side. 5 will come here, 6 will come here, then 5 here and the next 5 also here correct and similarly if you have gone to the left hand side here you can pick the minimum and the maximum and then take their average which is 3 in this case then again split them up in similar way 4 will come here, 4 will come here, 3 will come here, right. And the interesting point, point to note is, now if all the elements of the array become same, right, in that case, there is no point doing the operation. Because, for example, for this 5 by 5, if you find the average, it will be 5 right and the all the element is smaller than equal to 5 will go on the left hand side so so 5 5 will go on the left hand side and the, on the right hand side there is nothing and again on on the 5 5 5 if you perform the operation you will get the same result So if the operation, if all the elements are same, then there is no point going further. There is no point going further, right? Okay. So if you look here, what is the sum of the array that you can get here? So for this, the sum is 32. Right. For this, the sum is 11, this subarray. For this part, for this array, the sum is 21. For this part, the sum is 3. For this, sum is 8. For this, sum is 15. For this, sum 6. Yeah, let me raise this to avoid confusion. Yeah. Right. 
yeah so in the question the next part is you will be given some values some queries for example they will ask you is it possible to form 15 so if you see here yes it is possible if it is possible you have to say yes it is possible then if i ask 19 is it possible to form 19 then again you will see i can make 32 i can make 11 3 8 15 6 21 no i cannot i cannot make 19 so answer will be no right yeah so the idea is simple in order to query or tell whether a particular sum is possible or not what we will do or what we can do we can find out all the possible sums we can calculate all the possible sums and store it somewhere then when we come to the query we can check in the store whether it is available or not if it is available the answer is yes otherwise no okay yeah so we can directly implement whatever we have discussed yeah so let's take a look at the code now i will keep this diagram over here for the reference okay so we have an array of size n and we have q queries this query whether this sum is possible or not so here we have store all the array elements and here all the queries and of as i mentioned that we will store all the possible sums like 32 11 3 in our store right so i mentioned we will have a store and in the store we will store all the element all the possible sums basically 32 is possible 11 3 like this so this is store so uh, i am taking this as unordered set so this will store all the possible sum possible sum right now i will pass this function populate sum populate p sum i will pass it the array this whole array and i will pass this store my store and i will tell this function to fill this store with whatever sum possible so once this function will be called yeah it will do some task right yeah so once this call is complete you will have all these elements in your store 32 11 3 you will have 8 you have 21 you will have 15 you will have 6 i think you have 2 to 4 5 6 7 yeah so all this element will be in this ordered set or in the store now we will look at how to find out all the possible sum but yeah but assume that it has already been calculated now what we will do we will go to the query each query each query one by one and then we will some simply look in the store in this store uh, whether this element is present if it is present obviously the count will be one yeah if it is present we will say yes otherwise no So the only part left is how to fill this store. So we'll go to this function populate possible sum here. So here we have the array, right? We have this array A or in this diagram, we can say we have this array A. So here I am calculating the sum and after calculation i will get this 32 and then i will store this in the this store in the map right 
So for this array, we are done, right? Now we have to first find out the, okay, before that, before that, as I mentioned that if all the array elements are same, in that case, we don't need to go further, right? So this is what we are doing next. So we are finding the minimum element in the array and the maximum element in the array. If the minimum and maximum element are same, it means all the array elements are same. In that case, we won't do anything. We just return it from here. So from if, for example, if we reach here, we want to go below. Right. Otherwise, if all the array elements are not same in that case, we'll first find the average as we are doing here, first find the average. Then we'll create two vectors, one to store all the elements, which is less than equal to average. For example, this, and one to store all the elements which are greater than equal to the average, right? So we'll iterate through the array and we'll compare with the average and cause we'll store the value to the corresponding part. If it is less than equal to, store to the left, otherwise store to the greater than vector, right? So this part is done, right? Now what we have to do? Now we will recursively call on this part and on this part, right? So we'll recursively call on the left hand side and less than equal to element or greater than element, then greater than element, right? Yeah. So this way, when the whole, when the this function execution complete, we will have this store populated with all the possible sums. Yeah. And the important point here is this, we are passing this by reference here. We are using this ampersand. Otherwise, uh, this, the same P sum won't be updated. Every time it will be a new one and eventually it will give you wrong answer. So yeah, you can check out for uh, how to pass by reference. What is the meaning of the same percent here? Yeah. yeah, that's it for this video. I hope you understand the problem as well as the approach. Thank you for watching.